Coach, just how, how good was it to get back on the winning side after the way things have been going? How do you think it went, Hunch? <laughs> I mean, we're happy. We'll have a good dinner tonight with, with family and friends. It's a little bit better than uh, the alternative. But, yeah, I mean, it was – I think our whole team uh, really responded in the second half. I thought, you know, in the first half, kind of weren't making shots. Maybe the flow wasn't what we wanted offensively. But I thought the second half defensively – um, holding the uh, old miss to 37 uh, percent defensive activity with steals kind of doing you know what we do um, which is create offense through our defense and then certainly um, you know when we're able to make threes like Jordan Walsh did tonight and and obviously Joseph Pinion those two guys in particular their three point uh, shots kind of opened up uh, dribble drive angles and stuff for for other people and also made three threes tonight. He seems to be shooting really well the last few games. What's been the key to him turning things around beyond the arc? Well, I think just his uh, his work ethic. Um, I got in today and and, uh, and and worked out at. I think I got here at seven oh six, and he was either finishing or close to finishing, shooting. Um, his work ethic's been extremely consistent on a daily basis on his own. Uh, and I think he's really focused. I mean, I think he's he's a guy that um, just the, the the steady approach of getting getting his work in on his own um, has been really impressive. And we need him to continue to play really well on both ends. I think that you know you can look at at Devo's stat line and, and the three for five and, and six of, from three and the six of eleven, but his defense. It's like every single night he's taking a star player. Um, and not doing a good job, but doing a phenomenal job from a defensive staff. I cannot talk enough about his defense. Even, even these games we haven't won, whether it's Hodge, whether it's Miller with Alabama, uh, whether it's Miller with Ellis, I can go on and on at how he has defended at, a, at an incredibly elite level. Oh, yeah, Eric Anthony really was good today. What do you think of his game? Yeah, I think Anthony just, you know, as a, you know, with, with a lot of our young guys, I mean, you just want him to keep growing, uh, to keep playing with confidence. Uh, but his stat line, uh, first of all, it's hard to, uh, as a guy, with a guy his size, and then you're going against some, some of the smaller, um, you know, point guards with great quickness, like a guy like 24, Ruffin. Um, you know his ability around the rim. We posted him up one time on baseline out of bounds, and so you're you're seeing growth in his game on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, there's not many freshmen that are going to have 17, eight, and five steals. I mean, that's the five steals is to me is as impressive as as anything that he did tonight. And and, and then um, you know, Joseph, your last two SEC wins, he's come off the bench. I think he gave you 13. I think I, I think that's right. Just could you expand a little bit more on or expound on what he did? And obviously, Ricky was having a rough game. You took him out early in the half and then didn't put him back in. Was that you just felt like it just wasn't one Ricky's day? Well, I thought Joseph really played well. You know, there's a lot of things that go into decision making, and and uh, Joseph Pinion uh, tonight rebounded the ball. He had five. Uh, rebounds in just 21 minutes. He had uh, four defensive rebounds. Defensive rebounding was a high, high priority coming into this game. It was something that we talked about over the last 48 hours that, that we needed to, to collectively uh, defensive rebound. And, and, and there's no doubt is three for six from, from the field. That being Joseph's was, opinion was extremely important to us, but just as important uh, defensively. I thought he did a really good job. I thought he was really solid. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, and and loose balls and rebounding are important as well. Uh, and he tonight he got loose balls, um, you know, had a steal. Uh, one of our 12 steals was with Joseph, so he played well. And I think, you know, with him it's going to be matchups. Like you know, we felt there was a couple good matchups for him defensively, um, and so that's certain from an offensive standpoint. Uh, there's, there's no doubt that Joseph can help us and stretch the floor out, and, and uh, I give him a lot of, a lot of credit for his confidence shooting the ball. Like when he comes in at games, he's kind of locked and loaded and shot ready. Got a block shot, first block shot of the season. What, what'd you think about that? He, com you know, he competes, um, and again, I think a lot of, a lot of games are going to be matchups. Um, and again, we, we felt coming into the game that there was a couple guys that. 
uh, that would be, you know, players that, that defensively would be a, a, a good matchup from our, from our side of the ball with, with him. Coach, 11 turnovers tied the fewest you've had since the SEC opener. Just what was the key to taking better care of the ball? Yeah, and I think that, Christina, there's always like, you know, two sides of it. I mean, one, um, you know, old Miss is a, you know, they'll 1-3-1 one, one, and they'll make you eat clock. And um, it, it's not just the University of Arkansas against Missouri turning the ball over. I mean, they've led the country in steals for most of the season. And then you add in the fact you're playing in front of a, a sold-out building or close to it um, and a team that plays that way. Um, certainly getting a shot on goal for us is important because we feel like we're a good offensive rebounding team. Um, and so no live ball turnovers is just like in, in football. You know, if you turn the ball over in football, you're probably not going to win. Um, and so for us, the way we you know, go through drought scoring, we, we can't turn the ball over because if, if we don't, I think you'll see results like our defense tonight. Um, so some of the defensive struggles – of late have really not been defensive struggles. It's been our offense has has let us down with taking care of the ball, and then it looks like we're not defending when in reality, um, you know, you, you could have nine guys out there defensively, but when you, when you have live ball turnovers, there's not much you can do. Eric, I'm curious how much you enjoyed having Jordan Walsh available for the whole game. And you got 40 minutes out of him today, one foul, just the, the value of that. I mean, uh, he, uh, you know, he had five fouls and I don't know how many minutes he played last game. 13. I mean, I, I mean there was a lot of firsts for me, which is really cool. Like, you know, as a, as a coach, 50-year-old guy, I love to see new things and learn. Um, never seen four guys foul out and uh, have never seen a player get five fouls like that. Um, but you learn, you have, you have a young team. Um, it's going to be important for us to uh, look at that stretch when they, uh, when they made a little scoring run to try to get better and try to improve. Because um, we, you know, we are young and we still got a lot of basketball to play. I think, you know, I, I thought Jordan played phenomenal at Missouri, I mean, other than, other than uh, not having the ability to play any more minutes, um, I think he had like 12 points in 13 minutes. So, uh, love the fact that he was struggling offensively, uh, continued to shoot the ball, continued to work. Um, yeah, if we were still playing right now, I'd probably still play him because for a freshman, um, you know, small forward, I, yeah, yeah, he rebounded the ball shot the ball and, and I thought uh, just as we've talked about Devontae Davis's defense I I thought I thought Jordan did a great job on on breakfield number four who is their second you know guy that they look to go to offensively coach McKell gave you 21 minutes tonight how, how what did you think of him I think he went to the locker room there late do you have any update on his health no he's he's uh, going to get x-rayed and evaluated um but he played great you know, it's it's. Uh, we'll have to see what what the medical report comes back. Um, but he played great basketball. Uh, you know, we started him in the second half. I thought he gave us a, a real defensive uh, presence uh, with the two blocks as well as the two steals. Uh, you know, and 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 again, a lot of a lot of nights there's matchup things, and and Ole Miss um, has uh, two really three bigs in 21 Allen, uh, 33. Uh, inside number 10 uh, all three of those guys and then you add in the fact that you know that, that McKinnis is a big guy double zero you know you're talking about four guys that, that eat up space and and they're good around the rim and I thought I thought uh, Mikel did a phenomenal job kind of because they would platoon those those four bigs and he guarded four different guys in the second half at, at, you know depending on who they had in the game it is a leg or foot or anything or it's a foot Yep. Coach. Kind of got back to the identity defensively of generating turnovers and, and steals, but you did so uh, without fouling and, and putting the opponent on the free throw line of time. How important was that part of the equation today? I mean, we played the same defense we have uh, for four years. We didn't change. I'd love to tell you guys that um, 
I mean, yeah, we used towels over our head when we defended the last 48 hours and sliding and trying to have active hands with the towel and keep the towel straight so that we could get deflections and not foul. But philosophically, we're, I'd love to come in and say, yeah, we, as coaches, we got together and changed. I mean, I, it's, I, mean, I don't know what happened the last couple of games. Same defense. So um, if anyone thinks that we told our guys to be more aggressive, uh, putting teams on the foul line 36 times, 36 times, and, and 40 times, it's the same defense as we played tonight. Um, yeah, Eric, we, we saw Nick was on the bench, and I think he tweeted or Instagram. Scotty told me because I don't I don't know how to get on Instagram. But uh, Bob, we need to get you on Instagram uh, okay. ASAP. Okay, well maybe, he, but, but that he had some kind of photo of being back at practice. I know he's probably not near ready to but play. Nick, Nick is not practicing. Um, yeah, I just, he's I, not practicing with the basketball team. I just want to know what the update is on him. There, there's really no update. Um, you know, he's back in town. He's he's uh, he's rehabbing with the trainer, um, and 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 under our doctors. Um, so he's still in you know same um, you know same same situation. And and then um, Jordan was talking about what a big win this was, obviously because it's been a while. Cause the Super Bowl and there, yeah, there were a lot of Super Bowl signs up in the locker room. I was going to wonder, did they get that from you or kind of what, what was the Super Bowl thing? Well, unless one of those guys wrote it, but yeah, it was from us. I mean. Um, you know, we have to have the mentality that, you know, one game at a time, we have to have the mentality. There's another Super Bowl on Tuesday, just so you know. Yeah. So, um, but we have, to, we have to play, you know, with the desperation mode. And I, look, I thought we played really good at Missouri. I thought they played good. They played really well at home and uh, didn't get some breaks, lost the game. Uh, but I thought the effort was phenomenal and thought the effort tonight was really good. So, uh, you know, what you want your team to do is grow. You want your young guys to continue to get better. Um, you know, even even putting you know Barry Dunning in. You know, at some point, you know, our jobs to continue to try to develop guys as well. With Ricky, just felt like it wasn't his day. Yeah, I thought, I thought Joseph did what did what what we needed, which was defensive rebound, make shots, uh, not turn the ball over, and and I thought he played. I thought Joseph earned the minutes tonight for sure. Kind of what it like with the last three games, shooting about 40 percent from three and pretty good volume. What's I mean, what's been the catalyst for that? I think just putting in the work. You know, it's it's um, these guys have really worked the last I, I'd say like the last eight nine days. Um, individual player development has has uh, has has ramped up or increased. Um, you know, we talked about you know now that we're back in school with five. You know, some guys five classes that you got to have uh, incredible time management, um, and you've got to figure out when is your time to get in. You know, some shooting slot time, uh, whether it's in the morning, whether it's at night, whatever whatever you're comfortable and and how that falls in line with your with your class schedule and our practice schedule. I think we have some guys like Jordan, like Anthony, uh, that have done a really really good job. We talked about Devo, because um, right now from here on out. You know, our, our guys are in class, and so it's important to figure out, you know, get the, get the proper sleep at night and then also figure out after your classes or between classes how you can come in and continue to evolve your game. We have another quick turnaround, so we'll take some questions about LSU right now. Well, but you had a rematch. Obviously, the first one didn't go your way. What, what, Bob, you're that quick. What, what, what's Mike your said that, and you didn't even hesitate. Oh, well, I don't know. Um, what are your thoughts on getting another shot of? I think we're looking forward to uh, to competing against LSU again. Um, it'll be a physical game. Um, you know, I thought defensively we played well against LSU. Uh, offensively, we've got to play uh, better than, than what we did. Um, you know, the, you know, Miller's a really good scorer. Um, I thought we did a pretty good job on, on him and Williams inside. Um, we've got we've, we've to limit his touches much like we did in game one. And then certainly uh, Hannibal's dribble drive, um, you know, we've, we've got to get better um, guarding him than we did down the stretch in Baton Rouge. And then 
just I, I, just to say, I, I don't know if he's he, he missed their last game. I don't know if he's playing today. But if they don't have him, how do you think that affects them? Who's that? LSU. Having yeah, well, they, just to say, missed their last game for personal reasons. I'm not sure what's going on yeah, there. Yeah, no, I mean, I, th I think you know, uh, any time a team misses misses a uh, a player, a guy that plays substantial minutes, it changes. Um, you know, the complexion of, of how a team looks, but it also opens up opportunities, um, you know, without, without uh, TB and without Nick Smith, you know, other guys have gotten opportunities minutes-wise, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure, I mean, LSU's coaching staff, I think, has done an incredible job all season long. Their non-conference, uh, their coaching staff figured things out pretty quickly, and, and uh you know they'll they'll make adjustments based on who who they have, just like we're trying to try to do with with who's available for us. Coach, how much does just winning a game maybe help from a mental standpoint? You know, going into another game, is it something you think you can maybe build on? I mean, we've tried to build on it the last couple of years. I don't, I don't, you know, it's, that's one game. Um, I mean, I can tell you that the mental uh, makeup of our team right now is 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 better than it was three and a half hours ago. Um, but as we all know, on Tuesday night, that game is going to—it's going to have its own theme. It's going to have its own identity. The game in, in uh, Baton Rouge has nothing to do with how the next game unfolds. You know, from a style standpoint, rosters are different, rotations are slightly different. Um, so you, you got to go into each game with adjustments and. Uh, I mean, I certainly didn't walk in here today and, and think that uh, our rotations were going to go the way that they did. It, the, the game dictates minutes. The game dictates shot attempts. Um. Bob? On, on the radio show, you know, and I, I think Chuck asked you about all the delays, and you talked about being an old school guy, really not liking reviews, and then freaking uh, Tuesday night's games like, like a marathon. Today wasn't quite as bad, but what are your thoughts about all these delays and, and uh, how maybe that impacts the flow of the game and win or lose? It's not a lot of yeah, I, 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 you know, I, um, from a from a stoppage of play or whatever, this is, uh, I'll preface it, this is, this is only my opinion. This is not criticism. If I'm watching a baseball game, I don't want to see reviews over and over and, and uh, if I go to watch Coach Pittman's team, I'd prefer not to see stoppage of play and, and video stuff. And whether I'm coaching a game or watching a NBA game on TV, um, that stoppage of play is whatever. I, I mean, I'm old school, and I remember plays at the plate in World Series, and you live with the call. Um, but I've also been in plenty of meetings in different leagues, and a lot of coaches really love um, getting the call right where you can see it on the video monitor or whatever. Again, uh, being the son of a coach, I, you know, I, there was there was many times that that I heard him say, "Hey, you live with the call," and everybody's you know, there's human nature and stuff happens. So.